Hey everybody, welcome back to the stream. It's been a little while, but we're back again. We've got uh, Disco Elysium here booted up. Uh oh. It's been too long for my dogs. They are, uh... Oh wow, I just, just discovered this. <laughs> it's kind of behind the camera up there. I never knew that was a thing that you could do. What does that do? I guess it's like a a quick overview of how things work. Huh. Well, there you go. I just discovered something like right here at the beginning of the stream that I never knew <laughs> knew existed. Interesting. Anyway, yeah, so we're back. Um, been away for a little while, but uh, ready to go again. I think when we played last, we... Uh, discovered the bullet that killed the hanged man and we also got the boots and unlocked that shipping container and so I think our mission now is we're gonna go inside this apartment complex uh, that's our, our, our largest probably unexplored area and I'm gonna be dumping like all the skill points I can probably into conceptualization to try to get that uh, pitch uh, the the man that is so rich that he warps time and space around him pitch him an idea to see if we can uh make some money but uh so yeah we'll just dive right back in play for a little while and and uh try to solve this murder okay here we go let's just see don't see i swear i think this door is somehow how we are going to get into... I wonder if I put the crowbar in my hands, if that changes things. Do I have any skill points? No. So, I think that door is probably how we're going to get into that back area of the whirling rags. No, I was really hoping the crowbar would do it. And I don't think there's like a way to use the crowbar, so... Alright, so in we go. I haven't been in here yet, but that that guy was up on the balcony a couple of uh, streams ago and kind of told us some information, but we don't know where he went from there. Eviction notices and missing pets are plastered on top of each other. Well, that's sad. Flip up glasses, the auditor, plus one logic, minus one authority. I don't think I have any authority anyway. I don't, I'm not a very authoritative cop. I'm a, I'm a sorry cop. Where's my authority? I think it's... There it is. Yeah, it's already a minus one. So yeah, the flip-up glasses work really well because they're going to increase my logic, which I already like. So... What do I have on? I just have regular glasses. Visual calculus minus one drama. Yeah, let's put those on. Can I see? I don't think I can see it without taking my hat off. Is there anything else? That's just a... Uh, got those gloves on interfacing. That's good. Spirit decor. What does this do? Same thing. So that's good. Plus two authority, minus one composure. That's nice. I could put those on. That's plus one composure. Just leave them off for now. Okay. This box is filled with cleaning chemicals, smells of laundry detergent. There's a lot of stuff to look at here. An old shoe rack, boots, sneakers, and old slippers. Hmm, these shoes come in three sizes. Apartment 12, a loud rumbling snore comes from within. All right. So where to first? Let's just kind of explore a little bit. What is... It says this goes to the balcony. That's where we were. 
So let's just explore just a tad first. Someone has drawn a five-pointed star on the wall. Encyclopedia. That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism, in other words. Look out, Kim. There's communists around. Inspect the symbol closer. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mazab and the communards during their revol revolution. Even today, half a century after the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment, and fear in equal, measure, in equal measure. Why is the star upside down? What's the deal with the antlers while white? Why is the star upside down? To symbolize the toppling of the old order. And also, some social democrats were already using it. What's the deal with the antlers? The wreath of antlers represents a natural crown. It was about building a society that could exist in accord, in accord with the natural world, and at the same time, above it. Why white? Because white is the color of peace. What does it evoke in me? Smug superiority, aesthetic musings, the triumph of capital is undeniable, but maybe the guns were sort of cool. Revolutionaries had loads of guns. Okay, there's some shoes here. I'll take the money. Gotta pay my rent. Don't think I'm gonna have enough money for rent, so... I'll take everything I can find. It's a cool postcard. It's supposed to be that old lady that's like sweeping on the other side of that door. The door is locked. Their mailbox is overflowing. The graffito says a firing squad for the rich. It also goes to the balcony. A note reads, foreclosed by Martinez Realty Association. Let's talk to this lady while we're here. Give me a moment. An elderly woman is leaning on her broom. Her knuckles white as bone. She seems to be having difficulty breathing. The cow never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> Oh dear. She sneezes into a dirty handkerchief. Are you alright? Should I call a doctor? This won't take long. I only have a few questions. Okay, let's do that. Go ahead then. What do you want to know, policeman? She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan of the and the residence. Alright. Who are you? I'm no one, just an old woman who cleans the hallways. Do you live here? If you can call it living, she spits on the floor before wiping it off. That seems counterintuitive. Uh, before wiping it off with a broom. I have a little room upstairs right next to the coal room. It's barely bigger than a closet, but I don't complain. No, she, just, she juts out her chin, eyes shining. I have my bed and my aching bones to keep me company, and that's all I need from this world. That's kind of sad. And all she gets, too. The coastal wind beats down hard on the coal room door. Outside, splashes of waves make the balcony slippery. Rhetoric. She hasn't spoken to anyone for a while. Even her sentences feel rusty. Alright. I'm looking for a young man in his mid-twenties. Dark hair, skinny build, a smoker on the balcony. I have a few questions about those apartments. Let's look for that guy first. Yes, yes, I know who you mean, the scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil, right? She looks at the other end of the hallway. Well, which end? Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio turned to a talk show and tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? No trouble? I just want to talk to him. Do you know where he lives? Talk, the cleaning lady starts laughing but it turns into a violent cough, coughing spasm. She squeezes her broom, trying to catch her breath. What's so funny about that? He lives upstairs in room number 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. She points east. He's usually home in the evening. Thank you. He turns to you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. I have a few questions about those apartments. 
Ask away. Do you know who lived in the foreclosed apartment? The hell am I supposed to know? The cleaning lady shrugs, her mouth puckered like a dried fig. Another nut job, I assume. Is one of the residents on a vacation? Their mailbox is overflowing. People come and go. I don't keep an eye on everyone. They probably just moved or died, hopefully somewhere else. What can you tell me about Cindy? Oh, she's the artist. The artist, she scoffs. Nothing I can do about her, I'm afraid. She ruins the walls faster than I can clean them still. She leans on her broom. She leaves an old lady to her business more than I can say for others. Do you know who lived? Blah, blah, blah. That's all. All right. That's everything there. This is probably goes back out that way. What's in here? Can't open that door. Huh. So we know where he lives. Can I go in this door? Locked door, you hear someone walking around rearranging furniture. Let's knock. Sounded... Sounded like a woman, a woman's shoes. Knock again. This time the steps come closer. Who is this? Demands a female voice. Wary and tense. This is the police. Open up. Do I have to open the door? You hear the clacking of heels again. And other side walks right up to the door. Her tone is now getting a defensive edge. Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Let's go, the lieutenant says. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. It's generally easier to do things if you ha literally have any reason. That's true. I just thought these people might know something. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says 11. Examine the padlock. It's a solid lump of metal. But the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters could make short work of it. Oh. Better whip out those chain cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. Alright. I can do that. Wait. Tools. Sure, let's do it. This door has been closed, blah, blah, blah. This shackle snaps, the twig, lock falls to the floor. Little thud, it should be possible to enter now. After you, detective. Dang right, I am a detective. All right. In we go. Oh, this looks cool. It's a nice little room. A flamboyant poster of a white star, real lith lithography. Lithography? Photos of revolutionaries posing with guns. Books of critical theory on monstrosities of capital and such. Revolutions love to pose with their guns. Bust of Cross Mazab, a plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads Cross Mazav. Cross Mazav, Nom de Grey, was an economist and theoretical historian. What's a theoretical historian? He was a leading figure on the Grod side of the turn of the century revolution, where he headed the 11-day government. Mazab is considered the father of scientific com communism. Mazovian thought or Mazovianism. Why does this tenant have a bust of Kraz Mazab in the bedroom? Who lives here and needs to learn how to how the economy actually works? The white star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. He looks around before mumbling to himself, how fitting how the economy actually works. I suspect... That's exactly what they're trying to do. He leans closer to inspect the economics books on the table. There aren't many communists around, not after the revolution. Some youth still keep the ideology going, it seems. Hmm. That's a bullet. I'll take that conceptualization. I'm going to need that for that P-51. 
pitch. Alright, here's a door. Let's check this door out. Oh, that just opened. That just opened right up. Shower curtains are covered in some sort of slime. That's not good. Moss crawls on those bathroom tiles. Actual moss. That's funny. I wonder what the difference between the green and the yellow are. Hmm. Alright. I wonder if I can sell that stuff. I don't see anything else in there, so... Close the door. Alright, there was another area of this one. Close that door, too. It's kind of weird to work into your apartment left the door open. Sorry. I still got the cutters. Should be able to cut into that. Alright. What's that red thing? Book 16 days in the coldest April. I'll have to check that out. And the cover features a row of concrete buildings with monochrome rainbow in the sky. It tells a rather excruciating story about two lovers during an, eth an ethnic unrest in Yugo Grad. The book has been filled, filed under psychological realism. Psycholo uh, 16 Days of Coldest April. In your hands, you hold 16 Days of Coldest April by Yekartina Ye Dahl. The cover image shows a row of concrete apartments above which span a black and white rainbow. Feels heavy. Indeed, the book is unusually heavy in your hands, as though the cover were aligned with lead. How long is the book anyway? You flip through the book. The pages are thinner than you realize. The type's qu type quite small and tightly set. It's nearly 600 pages long. Real art is dense and difficult. If it didn't feel like you had to wrestle a suicidal bear to get through it, you weren't really reading. Look at the back cover, start reading. Look at the back cover. The back cover is dominated by a black and white photograph of the author. What does she look like? She can't be much older than her mid-30s in this photograph, and yet this cover and yet from this cover the eyes of a sad old woman stare back at you. Start reading. In cold, detached prose, the author describes a scene from one of the Yugograd riots in the 20s. Use overrun motor carriages and set trash cans ablaze, while heavily armored guardsmen dash in and dispense them in a flurry of baton blows. The Yugograd riots took place from 27 to 29, fueled by ethnic unrest and the state's repressive tactics. These events are often seen as marking the end of a brief period of liberalization known as the Yugo Grad Spring. Like all such periods, it is frequently memorialized in an art in art and literature. In excruciating detail, the author describes the socioeconomic conditions that have brought the people of Yugo Grad into the streets, centuries of humiliations and despair, and then during these riots, two young people meet. I would physically hurt you. It would physically hurt you to keep reading. Are you sure? Read ten more pages. Dang. Yeah, it actually did hurt me. Her happiness is fleeting. A cruel jest. The absurdity of the state totally crushes them, and they end up betraying each other. She becomes an official for the regime, and he a lens grinder in Frederick the End. Good stuff. Well, fair enough. Just hurt myself. <laughs> Shivers. A shift in temperature. The air chills around you. Dust settles on the stony floor. Rub your side for warmth. A former architect stands before a slice of window, a room plan in her hand. A cold wave has made the air in the building stand still, and the frozen 
It stands still and frozen with temperatures falling down to negative 20 degrees Celsius. Her face is red from the cold. She's breathing on her fingers, clasping the plan. Traces of sadness are visible in her expression. The plan. Faint pencil lines on paper depict the same place, but a missing eastern wall connects the room with a neighboring apartment. Ideas for arranging the furniture have been jotted down. Look around yourself. It's clean and empty with new tapestry. Embellishing the walls, a standard HB graphite pencil has fallen off a three-legged stool into the middle of the room. She had an eye for beauty. Hmm. The sea below, below looks cold and winter gray. Someone has tore down the wall. Hmm. An old grocery list on the table and checks. Logic, what happened here? You can't foreclose an apartment with a hole in the wall. This looks so sad. Alright, I had to heal myself. Put your emotions aside. Try to focus on the abstract, impersonal things. You can't foreclose on an apartment with a hole in the wall. It will still be accessible through the apartment next to it. That one didn't have a door, sadly. Nothing of great value remains here, except the stuff in the fridge. There's always a little something in the fridge. Indeed. Yeah, look at that. Okay, cool. So we've checked out everything here on the bottom floor. So let's go on up to the balcony. I can't remember what room. I think it was 20-something that that lady said he was in. All right. So we are back here with her, the artiste. Let's go and check out box real quick. Ooh, look at this. All this money. We might make it after all. I wonder if I can pick up that bottle. I should put the, uh... I should put the bag back in my hands here. I can. Probably should have had it while I was inside. Piggies have learned how to saunter up staircases. I didn't think you could do that with hooves, but here you are. We cops don't like closed doors or unreachable perches or people having high ground on us. No, that's that's probably better to just a joke with her. That's right, we've evolved. Yeah, I can see that. Cool mutations. She crosses her arms. Perception. That smell coming from her paint bucket, it's not paint, it's heavy fuel oil. Red dyed metal fuel oil is only used in government vehicles, or at least that's the idea. Hmm. Keep looking off to the side, what are you looking at? I think I've already asked her those. Is that government fuel oil? What, did you think I was using acryl... Aqua, aqua, aquarels sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself back in Jamrock. Fumes are bad for you. You'd better hand it over. That's some clever cultural econ commentary. Fumes are bad for you. Something to think about next time you're driving around in your pretty little piggy carriage. <laughs> so you won't talk about the murder, but maybe you can tell us something about the murder victim's missing armor. What do I care about? Some tin egg shells. Isn't armor art? Art for the body? Come on, Cindy, just help me out. Uh, Alright, sad piggy. I'll give you this This one. I saw a little girl in the fishing village running around with military-grade hand wear. Looks cute as hell. If you haven't been there, the village is a shithole down the coast from the main plaza. She waves her hand in a general westward direction. Have a good time. There's a little girl wearing gloves there. No, no, that's all snitching. 
That's all the snitching Cindy the Skull does for today. Actually, I don't even know why I told you what I just told you. She looks at you a little sad suddenly. I have a weakness for animals. It's the animal thing again. Or a weakness for police officers, miss. He makes note in his notebook. Thank you either way. Alright. Cool. Is that everything? Looks like it's everything. What's in here? This is the coal room. So that upper apartment is probably where the cleaning lady stays. I wonder if I could sell my clothes. Alright, let's use that... Uh, let's use the crowbar. Let's see if I can get it open. Five dollars! Oh my gosh! People be hiding all their money. A hundred tiny feet scurrying beneath the grate. The rats of the city. I wonder who stays in here. There's a bed. Someone's been sleeping here recently. Cindy? Question mark. Enough coal to last for several winters. Smells of chemicals. You must not be burning very much coal then if that's going to last them several winters. Hmm. Dang, that was a good, good little diversion right there. I'll take it. Alright, so this is probably where that lady lives. The lock is rusty, you can't get in. The chair is new, someone lives back here. Can't get in, huh? Or can I? Probably not. Worth a shot, though. No. No. I can't. <laughs> Alright. Here we go. Let's go back down to the other... There's no way to get, like, through here, is there? I don't think so. Curtain shift just a little. Someone is watching from within. I wonder if that is... I wonder if that's that lady that we heard. We tried to get in, they wouldn't let us. Hmm. Okay. Don't have a reason to get in there, so we can't. But we can... Get up to the balcony. I wonder why Frit has three T's. Fifteen cents. The breaker box is full of cigarette butts and electric wires. Well, it just seems like... Kind of seems dangerous. To just fill it up with... Cigarette butts. Huh. Sounds like a job for the crowbar. Sounds good to me. This, just a door, nothing for you right now. Okay, is there anything else? I don't think there is. I think that's just an Or That's just, yeah, so we need to go up. I'm just walking around with a crowbar. Never know when you're going to need it. Someone's growing rosemary, thumb, and cactus. That's probably his... That's his... Store is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Let's see if anyone is home. No one answers. Looks like the young man we're looking for isn't home. I think our best chance is to catch him in the evening. He looks around, taking in the cold spring air. We should return to tonight after we have finished with our work. How about 1,200? 2,100. Sounds good. 
What are you talking about? Sounds good tonight, 2100. Let's see what... What are you talking about? The smoker on the balcony, this is why we're here, right? He might know something about the murder, so tonight, 2100. Sounds good, 2100. Tonight, 2100, right here, apartment number 28. He writes down his little notebook. Good. Let's go. I wonder what happens if I send him off on his, like, deliver the body to the morgue thing. This door is apartment 29. Complete silence. Whoever lives here isn't home. This is the door to apartment 30th. 30. Voice from within, singing along some buoyant dance track. I guess there's can't get in that door, huh? Right, they won't let me. Yeah, nothing. Well, that kind of just stifles my investigation. I have to wait till 2100. I wish I had just kind of done that last night. So now, where to go? What to do? I wish I could get over to that fishing village. I wonder if it's fixed yet. I haven't been down there. Good news. I've got enough money to, to survive another night. Let's get down. Let's go consult. I could go talk to her, but I really don't want to. She would give me some information about something. If I could just find my badge, that would be useful. Find the murder weapon. Locate a working firearm that shoots 446. Find armored gloves. Run the number on the victim's armor. We could probably go check in with that. Discovered a... Yeah, we could, we could probably do that. Find morale, Joyce's info, jam mystery. Yeah, so like these are two are both kind of... They're linked. Victims' tattoos. Ask around about the tattoos. I haven't seen anybody that I feel like I could ask about the tattoos. Hmm. Who else has unauthorized act? Victims' clothes. That may take a while. Strange doors and whirling. No one knows where they lead. Find a way in. See what's hidden there in the hostile cafeterias. Forgotten corners. Half Insane Joyrider has jumped over the canal. See if you can find evidence of his reckless activity in west on the coast. Oh, well, yeah, we gotta get over there first. Someone reported the hanging. Maybe if you find out who it was Maybe we'll shed some events. Light on the events. You have no idea where to start. But the caller could have been anyone. Keep searching for the caller despite lack of any obvious leads. Yeah, so I mean, gosh, there's a lot of stuff that's just kind of up in the air. Man with sunglasses. Okay. Could go back and try his again. Do I have anything that boosts this spirit decor? I'm up to three. That does, but I think my, my thing, my jacket already uh, gives me one. Yeah, okay. Well, let's yeah, let's go. Let's see what's going on. Let's check on, uh, we could check that serial number. Da -da -da. Pick up the radio. 
Let's connect me to Sylvie. Did you find out more about the owner of the armored boots? Not yet, but I was able to convince the database people to share private sector information. They promised to get back to me by tomorrow morning. Ah, uh, let's what if we call Sylvie again. Hey Sylvie, is the police. Oh great. Da, 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 da. Hey, I found my patrol cloak earlier, but have you seen my policeman uniform? Do you know where my paperwork ended up being in the trash? I didn't even think that. T -t -t uniform, I never saw you in any uniform. You had your things on the disco things. Do you know why my paperwork ended up in the trash? Well, there's an uncomfortable pause. You tried to jam it down the toilet, sir, clogging it completely after I had unclogged the toilet and retrieved the paperwork. I threw it in the trash, thinking you didn't need it. Well, that's everything. Click, connect me to the 41st. I actually lost my gun too. Nope, I'm good. I really don't want to talk about it. Hmm. All right, let's close the door. I thought I thought we had already done that, but I guess we haven't. I don't really know how to ask about the tattoos. Oh look! Tell me more about this. Turned me into a bad person. Look, I didn't. I didn't turn you into a bad person. It's all for now. You did the right thing, man. Come on. I should have the bag out. That will help. Gotta gotta keep the streets clean. Nothing over here. Everything's still cool here, officer. Ah, uh, do I do I want to get some money? I don't need it yet. This man probably comes from Segei, sometimes known as the Apricot Suzerainity and Archipelago in the Samaran Isola. You're from the Apricot Suzerainty. Suzerainty calls to mind an era where the Segei Archipelago was colonized or Revachal. It's a bit of a slur, in other words. Oh, sorry, I did not mean to say that. I meant to say that you're from. Pronounce it very pacing. <laughs> yes, exactly. Very cool. Siling nods, his eyebrows furrowed. I admire your awareness of our intertwined histories. It's super nice of you to apologize for colonialism. The Apricot Susan suzerainty is a shithole, and that's why I left. Right. But isn't it only a shithole because of Revachal? You're welcome. I do try to be supportive of other people in the cultures. I don't know why I'm talking about this. It's some kind of mind reaction. Point to your head. I'll try to be supportive. That's so cool, officer. Speaking of, why not support an independent local entrepreneur? <laughs> I'll leave you for now. That's funny. I would love to, but money is hard to come by in this game. Oh, here's some people. Maybe these guys are... I can't talk to any of you. Are y'all fixing the bridge? Can I fix the bridge? Oh yeah, I might be able to. Because the thing is gone. Rusting control panel loses loose wires dangling from the hole where an indicator light used to be. Mechanical lever sits in the middle. Pull the lever. Secret completed. Close the water lock on Wednesday. Grab the handle and close. Pull the lever up. As soon as the metal connects against the contact pins, you hear a very loud clunk. Then the water lock starts moving. Nice, this opens up a lot of stuff. I hope. Can go get, uh, try to find the other armor and some other stuff. Water lock starts moving. Kim says, okay, the lieutenant looks across the canal. If we ever need to go to the coast, then this is the way. But please contain your wanderlust for now. I don't want us to get sidetracked. Not with everything going on. 
focus on one thing, achieve it the next, then the next, he thinks. That's the task chain. Well, Kim, we're definitely going over. Well, I guess my, I could go talk to that grumpy-ass cop. And then we can go over there. Dang, I'm so happy that we got that. I was kind of at the, uh, I was kind of concerned about not being able to do anything. I wonder if I can go into Kim's room. Does it have like a weird connection to the basement or something? It's good. It's a nice little catchy tune. For sure. Okay. Let's see what we got going on up here. This lady's never home. Still nothing. Stock again. Still nothing. Fair enough. Leave. What about your room, Kim? Can we go in there? No, can't. Fair enough. I don't think there's anything else here. We could go out on the balcony, but that doesn't seem to go anywhere. Revachol or is Oranye Clossier. That's interesting. She's up there. I just don't know how to get up there to talk to her. And I'm sure I'm like I'm just missing it. It's probably very obvious. But I don't know how to do it. I feel really dumb. Unless, like, she has this cool apartment that connects to the roof. Hmm. All right, let's go talk to the grumpy cop. What is it? All right, got nothing to say. All right, grumpy cop. Hey, I can't believe this shit. Even called your station. She's with him. Whew. Let's try. Damn it! Something. A firefighter's uniform. Excuse straighter. You have. I don't think he's a firefighter. I'm not going to ask that. Dang it! I don't know how to level up. I can't level it up any further. I got leveled up as far as I can go. That was just a poor roll. I failed that twice now. Dang it! Alright. Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. Nothing new. Let's go ahead and pay for my room while I'm here. You go, Gart. Can I help you? Boom. Bam. There you go. You are welcome, sir. I pay my bills. I need like a super crowbar. That's what I need. Uh, not going to do any drugs, even though it says I could. Gonna be, we're gonna redeem this guy. Here we go. Off to the other side. Do do do. Don't worry, Kim. We got this. The radio relay hums with electricity. Ooh. Don't mind if I do. Already saving for tomorrow. Dang, this is a whole new area to explore. Cool. Take that. Traffic beyond the gate. 
Traffic beyond the grate. More abandoned motor lorries. The sign says no entry. Someone scribbled an inverted star on it. Well then, I'll show you no entry. Jamrock Biker Cup Cop Sunnies. Emp empathy. Interesting. Well, I hope I can sell those, because <laughs> I'm going to need them tomorrow. I wonder if I can... How do I get over there? Someone has broken down the fence and the barbed wire. Well, thank you. That's exactly what I needed. The swing is missing. No one's been here for a long time. Inland Empire. Rust peels off the bent iron post of the swing. The wind whistles through the skeleton of the small house behind you. There's desolation everywhere. What happened here? In this yard, the lieutenant looks at the small building. A flock of gray swallows takes off in the distance. He's assessing the situation. How long ago was it abandoned? Someone thought they could have a summer house in a block obscure for cheap didn't work out. They abandoned it about a decade ago. What's a block obscure? A black block. A part of the city left unrenovated after the war. Or one that has fallen into fallen to gang violence. Or has become inhospitable in some other way. Encyclopedia. On aerial photos, block obscures look like dark squares, hence their name. So this part of the coast is a block obscure. Practically, it's not an official term in any way, but he spreads his arms, look around, no sewage, broken power lines, crime, drunks, uh, power lines, crime, drunks, life is tough in the blocks. No, it's no place to build a summer house. Maybe they left something useful. Yes, for you to pick up as part of the Jamrock Shuffle. He gives you a weary smile. It's not meant as a nagging, just an observation. We should move. I don't think we will solve the murder with forays into urban hinterland, at least in this phase of the investigation. You are probably right. The wind is uh, corralled by the four-story building around the yard. Get that money! Lori says the graffito to the ghosts of us. It's a tie. This is a tie-in to the Last of Us. The ghosts of us. Someone has left their music collection beneath the tarpaulin. Cool. I wonder if smallest church in Saint Saints. Use interact button to inventory to inspect the item. I wonder if we can play that in our music player. Put that back on, because I see some bottles. This tape you found from a shack on the coast. The A-side has the smallest church in St. Sains written on it, while the B-side is supposed to contain the instrumental version. Requires a boombox. No way I'm going to be able to afford that boombox. There's no way to listen to this tape without working tape player or a porter reel at hand. A pawn shop. A pawn shop would have a tape player. Yes, it would. Someday when I'm rich... Birds in the birch tree, barely audible, coos from above. Oh, there's a bottle right there. Come on now. <laughs> Gotta find that motor, the guy who jumped the, the fence or jumped the thing. Breaker box to power the radio pylon above you. Maybe there's something inside. Ahead, decades old concrete defenses. Children play on them now. Yep, get that money. Alright. Oh, there's looks like a car. I'm guessing that's the car from our jump. Take. Take. A bottle drained of all of its booze. It's frozen in the ice. 
Logic, this is it. The scene of the party. The fire pit, cigarettes, and empty bottles. All evidence of it. Hold up. Don't you mean the scene of the crime? Yeah, sure. It does look like a party party here. Scene of the crime. Not as much. I'm talking about what came after the party scene. Yeah, sure does look like, look like a lot of folks partied here. Looks like they were here a while, judging from the bottle from all the bottles. The sunken motor carriage provided them a focal point like a goose ice sculpture or a chocolate fountain. Hey Kim, looks like we've had a couple of party goers here. Looks like it. Looks like they had a great time laughing here. This was some kind of theater to them, a circus production by a great clown. Was this party against the law or on the ice like this? It was probably public danger. Kim says the lieutenant or Kim says the lieutenant oh well no Kim shakes his head not as not as such so let's keep moving so it's not against the law to party on the ice interesting banged up fuel canister okay that's pretty cool can I do anything with that is that a tool that's just an item Dented stainless steel canister for transporting and storing heavy fuel oil. Logo on its side has been partially stripped over the years of use. The government issued red dyed fuel inside. Looks like paint. Though it smells much, much worse. I wonder if I could give it to the artist lady. What's in here? Sunken motor carriage. A banged up motor carriage lies half submerged in the icy water, slowly sinking into the Insulindian Ocean. Only the cabin top, rear wheels, and the engine remain vis visible. Visual calculus. Remember the tire tracks in the Martinez? This is where they were leading. So this is where all the tracks were leading to. It appears to be so. The lieutenant has a peculiar look in his eyes as he inspects the wreckage. Let's investigate. Kim says, I agree. The lieutenant replies, his eyes never leave the sunken vehicle. We should definitely investigate. Inland Empire. You get a sudden sinking feeling. Stomach acid comes up as you look at the motor carriage in the deep, dark, cold water. Run your hand over the cold metal. What is the make of this MC? Can I see a logo? How long has it been here? What should we do? Can I see a logo? Logo is too deep in the murky water. You can't make it out. How long has it been here? The ice hasn't closed around the vehicle yet. He leans forward to peek into the cold water. My guess is it's been here since last Saturday or Sunday. The estimate is correct. The incident probably occurred on Sunday evening. What should we do? Let's wait for a low tide and see what's inside. Great idea. Then we can get the things inside. The joyrider must have left something good inside. Guns, papers... Maybe a cool jacket, a joyride jacket. How long will it take for low tide to come in? I don't know. An hour or two tops. Yeah, I don't want to touch it. Sit on a swing and wait for tide to recede. Okay. Oh, that's cool. We are actually sitting on the swing. As you sit down in the old rusty playground, the world around you becomes very silent. The hinges creak under your weight, dangerously so. That's funny. Nothing but the sound of seagulls high above in the sky, echoing like distant laughter. Ice cracks around the blue motor carriage in the sea. Hold on, it looks very blue. Hmm. Ice cracks around the blue. Whistle a tune. Hold on, it looks very blue. Why does that matter? Yes, it does. What's your favorite blue thing? Hmm, the lieutenant is starting to staring at staring at the wreck. Let me think about it. Yeah, let's whistle. The tune on your lips forms a strange yet undeniably beautiful contrast with the surrounding bleakness. Look at that healing. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance, then, still looking straight ahead, joins you with a high-pitched and slightly more melodic trill. Conceptualization. The two birds on a wire whistling by the seaside, looking at the water and a sunken car. Shivers. The wind blows in the distance behind the church. Some vagrants are having an argument over a bag of terror they found in the reeds. Further away, a flock of seagulls land. 
Sunken motor carriage. The clouds pass in the sky. Shadow of the swing moves like an hour hand on a timepiece. 30 minutes have passed. Looks like it might take a while. Time to present a good topic for discussion. So, is your dad also, you know? Point to your eyes. <laughs> the tide sure is taking its time, sweet time. Would you rather sit on an anthill for an hour or stand in a river of leeches? Uh, I don't get the question. Is he asking if his dad also had bad eyesight? Yeah, let's, let's look at this. This I'm pretty sure I told you that already. My dad and mom were both half CO light. I don't know who my mom or dad was. Cloud on the horizon grow darker, and the shadow of the swing. 30 minutes have passed. All I'm saying is I'm surprised people's skin color varies so drastically. If you have to side with either the strikers or the shipping company, who do you choose? Do you think I'll ever find my gun? Man, this is taking a long time. Who would you choose? Luckily, I am already a member of an independent organization and therefore do not have to choose between rock and a hard place. If somebody puts a gun to your head, I guess what you're just saying. I guess that's just your way of saying you decide with the company. I understand you're saying you're siding with the What if somebody put a gun to your head? Your voice echoes on the water. That's funny. Can you make out the mark now? Squint your eyes and say, is that a number on the side? Detective, I've been able to make out the mark ever since we've arrived. I find it odd that you haven't. It's a Capri Model 40. His eyes turn to you. Yes, why haven't you? Simple and rugged machine favored by working men, government offices. He pauses to think firefighters, animal control people, you know, those kinds of people. Is that a number on the side? Yes, 41. What do you think it stands for? It's as if he knows what it stands for, but wants you to say it. It's, oh no, this is my car. Does he know something about the speed racer? 41 is his rank in the under, underground street racing hierarchy. This is, must be Tommy 41. Looks like a factory made mistake and accidentally called this one Capri 41. I hate guessing. District something, a precinct something, municipal, rub your temples. Oh, no, this is totally... Oh, God, no. I'm sorry, Harry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 41. Precinct 41. A massive pit opens in your stomach, and the most terrible feeling comes over you. Nope. No, just nope. Say no. No, no, no. Oh, my God. It's mine. I drove my car into the sea. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Yes, your car is in the sea. Face it, so we can start dealing with this. No, I mean, seriously. It's just, no. It's this. Yeah. Good thing I healed my morale. With that awesome whistling. I'm afraid, yes. It looks like you started in front of the whirling, jumped over the canal, and then drove your vehicle in the sea right here. Maybe I was in pursuit of someone. How do we get it out? I can still fix it. They're not going to take me back after this, are they? The badge, the gun, and now this. Things were going so well. We were just whistling merrily. Well, at least I can see what's in there now. The badge, the gun, and now this. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and doesn't say anything. They're not going to take me back after this, are they? People are more valuable than the machines. He's trying to cheer you up. Training a police officer is even more costly. I can still fix it. How do we get it? That's very unlikely, the lieutenant replies with a sigh. All the electrics are toast. That goes for the electromagnetic steering and brake systems as well. You'd be lucky to find the undamaged components in there. He shakes his head. In a few months, there will be nothing but rust left of this vehicle. It'll be cheaper to buy a new one. Well, not cheaper. The motor carriage costs 40,000 real. But in the long run, it still makes more sense to buy a new machine than to refurbish this. I couldn't even pay a hostel bill. People are going to be angry with me, aren't they, in Precinct 41? Couldn't even pay a hostel bill. Let's face it, this is a substantial loss to your district's budget. He's avoiding your gaze now. I mean, my station only has four other vehicles in addition to my kinema. That was 20% of the station's vehicle budget. Ugh. How do we get it out? Detective, he says almost gently, we don't. A rescue operation really isn't viable at this point. 
So it's just going to be there like that. I'm afraid it will be, it will have to be there like that for many years. He looks around, look at it. Parts of it might be salvageable, but overall this machine is a write-off. Ugh. Maybe I was in pursuit of someone of whom the lieutenant looks skeptical. I don't think so. If anything, you were probably drunk. That's true. Things were going so well. We were just whistling merrily. You can still whistle, the lieutenant says with a smile. Besides, the night is always darkest before the dawn. All right. Well, at least I can see what's in there now. Well, that was a... I didn't expect that, but it makes sense. We found the traffic hooligan. Yes, let's take a look. Go to your inventory and interact with an item by clicking interact. Wow, I'm still in doing tutorial stuff, huh? Nothing new. All right. Wait, do I, can I not access it from this side? Or do I need the... Do I need something else? It's just off the coast cracks. There we go. Bam! Found my badge. Nice. I'm a, I'm a commander. Heck yeah. Give me that commander's jacket. Boom, I look nice. This thick blue blue piece of acrylic covering a thin leaf of paper with the officer's name and rank on it. Next to the writing, you see a man stare back at you, a younger version of you already dis disintegrated inside, but still presentable on the outside. Interact. Badge LTN-2JFR Dubois. A police badge on which you see the photo of a man. You, some seaweed is stuck to the back. I found my badge! At least something good came out of all of this. The lieutenant glances at the badge in your hand. Study the badge. Encased between two durable plastic sheets is a bluish card with lines of information and a watermark in the shape of a street grid of Revachol West. You see a photo of a man, a rank, a document number, the date of issue, and in the lower right corner, your precinct. Look at the photo. The man keeps winking at you with his green eyes. The photo is old, no doubt about that. But the badge is new. You used an old photo for a new badge. How old? Eight, maybe ten years. The guy in the picture is rather good looking. He's got a nice haircut and dis distinctly lacking a massive, <laughs> in massive sideburns. And he's winking. Why? Why do you think his face is already contorted by the expression, although it looks less grotesque on him than it does on you now? The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it to catching light. You see the lines of information on it and a shining watermark. Name, Harrier Du Bois. Harrier. It's a cool name. Harrier. That's long for Harry. So you are Harry, he thinks. Everart was half right. Probably not a lot of people know your full name. Whoever told him you're Harry Dubois didn't. Dubois, Dubois, whatever. Wait, what kind of name is Harrier? It's a wartime name. Revolutionary. The kind mothers give their sons during troubled times. Like Undying or Boxer or Ironside. <laughs> a name like Armor. Hmm. But I don't want to be Harry Dubois. Don't accept it. Harry Dubois it is, then. Accept it. I like it. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Harrier Dubois. The badge in your hand shines, catching the lights, blah blah blah. Rank LTN to JFR. Lieutenant Double Yefree I don't I can't even say that. What is that? Lieutenant is a rank above sergeant and below captain. It's the highest rank in the RCM that still does field work. I am a lieutenant. And double your freeder. The title of Yefritor is added to your rank when you decline a promotion to a higher rank. In your case, Captain. Lieutenant explains you have declined twice, thus the double Yefritor declined. There are many reasons one would do this. The rank above you in your precincts, the decomptage, 
might be taken, or sometimes promoted officers do not want to replace their superiors out of respect. And sometimes, he continues, they just prefer the type of police work available at their current rank. In your case, lieutenant. What is a... Yeah, what is a decomptage? Decomptage is a hierarchical system employed by the Revitual Citizens Militia. It means counting down to twos. The countdown is modeled after the dual leadership system employed by the left during the revolution, which in turn was developed by last century experimental psychologist in the University of Koenigstein. The lowest rank is junior officer, usually teenagers. Then there are the patrol officers, then sergeants, lieutenants, and then a captain. That's basically it, except for a few kinks. What kinks? Kinks like satellite officers and the additional Euphorator rank I already explained. Wait, satellite officers? You are given the title of a satellite officer if your partner is quickly promoted through the ranks and you rise with him. You don't seem to be a, you don't seem to be a satellite. So you've been putting up with all my bullshit because I'm your superior. So you've been putting up with me because we're of the same rank. I've been putting up with me because I'm your superior. No, I've been putting up with you because despite an unconventional approach, you're doing good police work. It matters more than driving your motor carriage into the sea. He smiles encouragingly, and now we've even found your badge. He trusts you for now. Try not to spoil it. That's true. I like him. I thought my rank was drunk. <laughs> yes, apparently you've had a rather successful career in the past, and he gave, he pauses to examine you. This leads me to believe maybe your current situation is only temporary. Thanks, that gives me hope. I'm afraid there are no ex-alcoholics. I don't want to get better. I want to get worse. Thanks, that gives me hope. Good, he says. Quick smile. Back to the document. Serial. That's just serial number. Revichol, Jamrock, Precinct 41 some numbers thrown in there for good measure. Those numbers are not there for good measure. They have an administrative purpose, one that unfortunately has been erased from your memory. Date of issue, 7th of November 50, four months ago. I'm guessing that's when you were promoted to rank of Lieutenant Double Your Fruiter. A new badge usually comes with a new rank. You seem to have been doing well then. You're pretty sure you weren't doing well, but better. Probably yes. Precinct 41. Yes, it's the designation of your precinct, like mine is 57, the 57th is mostly industrial harbor, a lot of asphalt, the 41st is... he stops, what? It's a tough station to work in, you have all the jam rock to cover, a district should have three precincts, but money is what it is. But then again, a faint smile, it's a legendary district and a hell of a station too. Must be an honor and a curse to work with people like Price, McCoy, Bradavia, Roberts, Fuhrbach, Dimitri, suddenly names from your decomptage flash in your forebrain. He knew all those people, although they are not from his station, they must be big. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it, oh, and the watermark, blah blah blah, and that's it. Oh, it feels good to find my badge. Not gonna lie. I wonder if that... Well, now that white check hasn't reset yet. Uh, find your paperwork. Find out... Find your other shoe. These are all the ones we did. So find your badge should be done, right? Yeah. That's nice. I don't remember what else was in there. I just remember my badge. Oh, it's my jacket. Nice. Cool. That was cool. Sad that, you know, footprints in the snow, they lead away from the accident. Seems like Walker either very confused or drunk out of his mind. Maybe I'll find my gun. There's a boat tucked away underneath the tarpaulin cover. Great news. The boat is big enough for a grown man like you to fit. Wait. What would I be doing? Great news. I found somewhere new to sleep. Oh, good. What are we doing under there? I don't know. Sleeping. What do people do under boats? This is merely a measurement of your visual cortex. Do with it what you want. 
found somewhere new to sleep. Huh? I said, great news. I found somewhere new to sleep. Points to the boat under the boat here. I'll, it'll be free. I can't pretty much finish the case from under that boat here. It's dry, weatherproof, free of charge. I'm going to live under a boat now. Sarcastic self-pity is not what we need at the moment, officer. I understand the situation looks grim, but we must continue with our investigation. You have a home somewhere all cops do. When this is done, you can return. Well, it's good to know that I found that, though. I'll take that. What is that window? Through the broken glass, dusty shelves, forgotten... and a forgotten chair. Oh, okay, so... There's that chair. That's interesting. It's over here. The cold breeze is enough to make the wall planks creak. Postcard. Take it. Bow tie. Nice. Can I wear a bow tie? Where's my necktie? Inland Empire? Give me that bow tie. Probably makes me look more official. Oh, yeah. You see a dark red chair in the dim light of the room. It's kind of just weird that it's just here. And it had a thing. Alright, fair enough. Wait, it says dim light. Should I put on should I use my I don't really think I I'm gonna I'm gonna use the I'll put the uh equip the flashlight just to see. Let's get the flashlight. I don't see anything. Alright, let's go. I don't see anything. Moving on. Okay. Let's go see if there's anything under this boat. Underside of the boat has recently been tarred. Alright. I'm wondering, I'm hoping that maybe I drove my thing over here and then maybe my gun's over here too. That would be awesome. Probably unlikely, but hey. Don't have to share that information with, uh, with that woman now, because I found my badge. Because she wouldn't talk to me because I didn't have my badge. The worn, beaten wood. And the lieutenant looks down the street. We can sit on the benches after we've solved the murder. Sounds good. in here? Pants. Kingdom. Plus one to Kingdom of Consciousness? What in the world does that even mean? What is the Kingdom of Consciousness? Did that even do anything? Moralist Pants. Tailored trousers, a light brown, moderate in every aspect. They're absolutely unremarkable. They do look nice. I don't really have any pants that are useful. Because these are just electrochemistry and they're minuses. They don't really do any electrochemistry checks. So yeah, so let's just put those on. Good enough until I find better pants. Hmm, these are some wonderfully regular pants. Not too tight, not too loose, moderate in every sense. You'll blend right in at, some pleasant, at a pleasant in at some pleasant dinner parties. I like regular normal things. Oops. It's a fashion faux pas. 
No, I like normal things. I know you do. These interior pants are like wearing a perfect compromise in your nether regions. No one will call the Moralin turn on you like this. That's for sure. You're a little more you're a little more moreless now, buddy. A little more normal. Even if you don't want to be. Composure makes sense. This is what wearing boring office trousers does to you. <laughs> That's funny. Did I get something else? Oh, postcard, yeah. You see dust something. I don't know what I saw. What's in here? White curtain has been drawn. Sounds of life in the north. A washboard scrums filth from scrubs scrums filth from fabric. Yeah. Okay. This is that. It's that house. Okay. Okay. All right. Just trying to explore everything. It's a bunch of dudes. Seem like a bunch of big. Early dudes. Brushes are too thick and thorny to pass through. So I can't go that way, huh? I have to kind of go around the long way. That's fine. We can go the long way. It's kind of a sad area. Take it. Construction material, whoever planned to build this house, left in a hurry. Yeah, I'll take it. A drop in temperature and an easy flow of an easy flow of air, empty sh an empty street before you, a thoroughfare unjammed with lorries. No more drivers smoking on hitch steps. Just silence. What did the smoke smell like? Chemically sweetened across the road, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened a hole in its roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. The road is smooth and motley. Craters filled with a black with a black asphalt. The asphalt first laid in, is gray already. A row of tenements under are under construction in the distance. Who are the people who live across the road? What about the bus stop? tub warm with warm water, a white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers 4, 18, 21, 4, 1. A modern washing machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. What about the bus stop? Number 31 or 312D. Young girls used to come here huddled up hoping for more warmth than air. Uh oh, for more warmth than their thin coats gave them. The bus took them to school. It has not rung for eight years. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. What about the road? Raiders pocked the surface. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money. It is a vital artery of flow of trade. There's one bump in the road. A dead dog lies flat about 200 paces away, right at the turn. Well, that's sad. A dead dog tragedy came from the wheels of a fast RCM vehicle hurrying to work. The cold washes over you. The sound of the sea has grown distant. The wind moves the aerosol. A detective stands behind the boom barrier. A breeze moves the curl of his hair. Yeah, I don't really get... Maybe that's a little... I don't know. I don't really get that whole thing... Take that. Alright, let's see what's going on here. I wonder if you talk all these guys hey, together. Tequila. Idiot Doom Spiral. Hey, Tequila, a 30 something man clad in two piece Lycra TM tracksuit, puts down his Pilsner and extends his hand in greeting. Good to see ya. How's business? How's your reality situation treating ya? Oh, they call I'm Tequila. Good to see you. How's business? How's the whole reality situation treating you? Shake his hand. So what's happening? Picks up his beer. 
Wait, tequila? Yeah, tequila, tequila sunset. sunset. He takes How a sip. Um, high concept reality based adventures proceeding? He says it like it's obvious, obviously your name, like you call somebody Billy Br Bruden, Brunel, or leader of the 4th Street Gang. Not too hot, I'm 50 year losing streak reality. It makes me aggressively sad. Don't know, people tell me I'm a cop. I'm getting used to that. I have re-entered reality to conquer it, to bend it to my will. I am the law. Nothing special like everyone else. I have all sorts of wild thoughts running through my head, but then pick the most boring one. Wow, I feel like that's uh, the game's kind of calling me out there. Reality it makes me aggressively sad. Don't know. People tell me I'm a cop. I'm getting used to that. It's good to hear you on top of things. Talking about the use. Did you know that I used to be a real mover and shaker? He thoughtfully picks at his shit-stained lycra jacket. Sadly, things ain't going that well in idiot Doom Spiral Land. Haven't found those keys yet. Haven't won that great piece of ass back. No word from my business buddies. Takes a sip of his beer. Idiot Doom Spiral home. Huh? This is bound to be a good high concept conversation at last. Why do you guys? What do you guys do around here? We're saving the world. He looks at his comrades. Please, please don't call. Don't call. Begs the man in the pipe. Okay, we're drinking. We're drinking alcohol. That's what we're doing. I tried to save the world once a long time ago with enterprise, creativity, and willpower, but that didn't work out. <sighs> so now it's a pirate's life for me. What is a tequila sunset? You keep saying it. That's what I, that's you. You're tequila sunset. How do you know this? We've met before. Don't you remember? Nope. You sure don't. No. Ah, he takes a sip from his beer. Do you want to know how Tequila Sunset came to be? Go ahead. Hmm, let me take a sip of, to moisten up my cords. He takes a big sip, then begins Tequila Sunset rolled into Martinez last Friday, and by Tequila Sunset, I mean you, the man, the myth. Wait, did we meet on Friday? Was I alone? Hey, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop interrupting. He takes another sip. You got here on Friday to solve a case, hoping to be the early bird who gets the worm. And by the worm, I mean the buzz, because as far as I know, all you did was get pissed drunk. Word on the street as you went around the local hostel telling people that you're a police officer and that it would be really, it would be really messed up if you shot yourself in the head right in front of them. That's pretty high concept if you ask me. It is. <laughs> Lieutenant Brow, Lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He's listening as casually as he can. What happened then? It was late Saturday night when we, the Union of Mor Moribund Alcoholics, were getting our drink on. Nothing remarkable about this. We get our drink on 24-7. Makes everything warm and glowy. I trust you know the feeling. One moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the plaza, followed by a series of ding, dings and bangs. Do you remember the sound of wood cracking the bill, the billboard? Naturally loud noises peak the interest of anybody owning a pair of ears. That's just the reality we're in. Naturally, um, I want to get off this story now. Let's hear it. Anyway, there was a brief silence, a gasp of silence, if you will, followed by a real commotion. We heard the carriage careening towards the coast at top speed. Sounded like someone jumped the canal. We grabbed the brewskis and rushed to the jetty. Never underestimate the speed of an alcoholic. What we saw was a sight to behold. A beat-up police carriage containing you right there on the beach. You revved the engine and screamed at the top of your lungs. The time hath come. <laughs> so naturally... Being the curious cat I am, I asked what time hath come to which you replied, The time hath come for Tequila Sunset, the end of all things. Oh God, what happened next? To say nothing, it's more dignified that way. Every word I said was true. Tequila Sunset will break the limbs of reality. But what happened next? Your reality contracted. You jammed the pedal, plowed right off the jetty and through the ice. The muscles in your right leg tense up. 
we ran towards the ice whilst you crawled your way out, miraculously unhurt, covered in seaweed and shit, like some kind of sea monster. When we finally got there, you were sitting on the beach, crying. You said your badge and uniform were in the car. It was too late to get in there, though. The carriage had sunk too deep. In this way, you and your motor carriage have a lot in common. That's funny. Recognizing a brother in need, we offered you condolences and invited you to party with us, which you naturally agreed to. We asked about the whole tequila sunset thing, and you told us it was your name now, and insisted that we call you that from then on. Wait, so is Tequila Sunset an event or a name? Tequila Sunset, huh? My real name is Harry. No, this is just what your mother called you. Your real name is Tequila Sunset. Just embrace it, brother. How long did we party for? Hours. It was an all-night drink-a-thon. Then, at some point, I think it was Sunday morning, you got belligerent and wanted to talk about Revicholian women, how they're beautiful and also whores, and so on. How one of them... <laughs> messed you up real bad after a short while you crossed the event horizon looked sullen got up and left without saying anything wow that's quite a story yeah but tequila's a legend around the precinct you must be proud to work with him if you only knew did i tell you anything specific about this person that messed me up you were pretty vague about it but you kept saying you got messed up real hard and we've all been <laughs> That's funny. No one... Nope. That's a... Don't call Abigail Abigail. It seemed pretty painful to be honest with you. If I had to guess, I'd say you're still working through some shit. Did I mention losing anything else? Besides your gun and your badge, you said something about your hope or heart or something. To be honest, the details are a little hazy. In retrospect, I guess you lost your motor carriage too. That's a big one. Did I say anything about my colleagues? You told us that they were a bunch of losers whose main interest was cramping your style. No specifics, though I was. it was more about you that night. You were the star of the show. Did I say anything about the case? Yeah, you said it was no biggie that you'd solve it in no time. He takes a strong quaff of his beer and that you didn't need anyone to do it. You're doing it solo. A lot of cops go solo and permit once they reach that level of alcoholism did we talk about politics yeah you said that it was okay that you crashed your carriage because the spectral hand of the market was go was guiding you this was before you started talking about how the pinkies were always trying to help oh my gosh this is hilarious did you read did you get a read on what kind of cop i was you kept apologizing for being such a bad cop and for the damage you've inflicted on everyone around you. You also kept pausing to knock the heel of your hand against your temples and saying, stupid, stupid, stupid. That sounds like me. I don't need to hear anymore. He nods. It's a hard thing for a man to confront his past. That's why I avoid mine at all costs. You seem like you're characterized by your storytelling ability. Want to tell me another s sometime? Whoop-dee-doo, so now I'm a storyteller, he says, slapping his knee. Right, why not? Better than a beach bum. Tell me how you became Idiot Doom Spiral. Depends, really. Are you willing to help me out? You might get scammed here. I have a feeling that's going to cost me a lot. What do you need? Booze. Did you already forget our party? He taps his finger to his temple. The thing I really... The thing I relayed to you earlier... So, have you got anything for good old idiot Doom Spiral? A bottle of for a story seems fair. I've got some sweet Commodore Red. I don't want to give you any alcohol. I'm not an enabler. Oh, I got some Commodore Red, yeah. Classy. He snatches the bottle and pushes the cork through the bottleneck. Before he can start, one of the other bums interjects. Hey, Spiral Boy, you gonna share that? Don't call Abigail. Huh. Shut up, guys. I'm telling a story here. He turns to you. Something happened to you. Something happened to me, too. My actual name is George, but around here, you already know. I was once a reasonably high net worth individual, founder slash junior partner at a high concept creative service agency. When my story begins, I had just landed a major contract with an insurance firm. Go on. I used the profits from my agency to finance what I called a cultural incubator. 
abstract value generation value per person high concept stuff i developed the paradigm worked within the paradigm but the burden of leadership weighed heavily on me so i went jogging every so often to keep myself sane wait how many people did you have working for you 22 full-time employees, an all-star team, potentially historic set of individuals worrying about them often kept me up well into the morning hours. Did the jogging help? It did. With trusty Sansarik tracksuit, I felt like I could conquer the world. But now, dreams are worn thin, much like my tracksuit, he says thoughtfully, brushing the dust off his stained pants. All right, hang on one second, guys. I'm going to go let my dog out, and then we'll finish this conversation.
All right. Back. We're back. Got the dog taken care of. So let's finish our conversation here with uh, Idiot Doom Spiral. But the dreams are worn thin, much like my tracksuit. So what happened? One day I left on my evening run. As you may know, it's impossible to clear your head when you're distracted by the sound of keys jangling in your pockets. It is weird to run with keys in your pockets. He shakes the bottle and makes a ringing sound. Perception. Sight. His eyes are clouded. His dilated blood vessels encircling his irises like stinging brambles. Conceptualization. His eyes are your eyes. Idiot doom spiral. So I remove the key ring, put my keys, and put the key put the keys for the front gate and the apartment into different pockets to stop the jangling. You see, at least that was the plan. I was halfway done with my usual lap when it started to rain. The reality of the situation became very, very wet very quickly. How wet are we talking about? Wet. Okay, it was raining really hard. There's trace of der derision in his voice. I made my way back home and discovered that I didn't have the key to the front gate. I'd mixed it up with the key to the letterbox, which was useless. Naturally, the situation required me to climb over the gate, which I did. There was no climbing down because I slipped and landed on my butt. <laughs> That's funny. I would have landed on my feet. Got... Okay. Say nothing. Reality was looking rather grim just then, me lying on my ass in a mud pit in the middle of a heavy shower, but when life knocked me down, I always got up. So I made my way across the yard, standing in front of my apartment floor door, flumbing, fumbling with my pocket. I realized that I also forgot my apartment key. So, okay, so what happened next? I rang my neighbor's buzzers. It was late, and most of them didn't even answer. Those who did assumed I was trying to sell them something and hung up before I could even explain the situation. People are naturally wary of admin. You see, one moment someone chats you up. Five minutes later, you bought a box of edible lingerie and strap-on. I don't begrudge them, especially since I was known to be one of the best. He pauses meaningfully. Just then, I experienced a moment of clarity. I still had the key to my office. I could wait out the storm there. But when I reached my office, I remembered that I'd asked one of my producers to change the locks that day, and since I hired only the best, he'd already done it and I couldn't get in. Anyway, long story short, life spiraled out of control. I haven't gotten into my apartment for years, and my girlfriend left me because she didn't want to date a homeless man. The company, well, you see where I'm going with this. So now you've heard my tragic tale. What do you think? Like nothing you've ever heard, huh? He takes a long swig. Wow, I mean, that seems like a simple thing he should have been able to fix. I feel like there were some steps missing. <laughs> exactly. Looks like the bright side, you've got one hell of a story. You don't realize all this... You, you do realize all this is your own fault. Wait, it feels like there's some steps missing. Tequila, I've thought about the series of events for a long time. If there was anything else, I would have thought of it by now. Why didn't you go to the authorities? Well, at one point they came to me, but you know, I didn't have any ID on me, so they tossed me in jail for two days. I can't say it increased my faith in the RCM. No offense, gentlemen. Do you all this is your own fault? I literally can't believe it. Me neither, Tequila. When I lost my keys, I lost more than, ac than access to my apartment. I also lost my leverage over humanity. I wasn't high concept creative director anymore. I was just some homeless asshole with premium sensorique like red tracksuit. You can't imagine what that does to a man's confidence. He turns his eyes to the bottle. Anyway, that was all the story. One bottle gets you. Almost empty this one. Why do you keep losing all your stuff? Good question, Tequila. If I knew the answer, you think I'd be hanging out on a beach in this formerly premium but now extremely dirty two-piece like or tracksuit. <laughs> I used to own my reality situation. My business buddies and I had our own creative services agency. I had a nice apartment and even nicer 
girlfriend, but somehow it all got away from me. Now I can't hang on to anything. Just last week, I stole this nice new jacket, but then I lost it too. The only thing I haven't lost are these two drunks. A lost jacket sounds like a mystery that could you could look into. What was the name of your agency? My agency man, he takes long melaconic zip, the boom boom room. One, our concept was combining high art with the lowest forms of marketing, the color red, breasts, and oil painting. I convinced my partners to reinvent some of our reinvest some of our profits in even more high concept cultural incubator called Thin Air. The artists were happy, the clients were happy. I was financing a group of poets in the East in East Revachal who were developing a new universal poetic language. But then it all went to shit. He looks towards the bay. Sounds like it makes no sense. That's because it doesn't. Missing oil painting and breasts to make ads isn't high art. It's just cynical wankery. That's high, so high concept. I have no idea what it means. High and low committifying com culture. That's extremely my shit. Never mind that I ask. Mixing high and low committifying culture. If it sounds da -da -da -da. so high concept, I have no idea what that means. I don't really know here. It's not high art. It doesn't seem like high art. Well, you know, sex sells. That's the first rule of advertising. Maybe, but it's still tired. Yeah, actually, you're right. Let's let the market sort it out. No need for me to re-regulate this stuff. That's funny. That's that was so cool about advertising. It's kind of like art, except you can also get rich doing it. What's up with the tracksuit? You already told me. What? You've never seen 100% like it before? Go on, feel the primo material. Sure. What just happened? Oh. Despair creeps into you. Getting fat on your weakness. Whatever noble intentions you once had as a police officer is eating them all up now. You're still coming up with sentences. It's a step up from total annihilation, right? I'm seriously running out of shits to give. I've wasted my life. I didn't seem like my thing went down. I'm done. No one even likes cops. I wish I was dead. I've wasted my life protecting humans. They don't deserve it. What did I... What happened? I'm done. No one even likes cops. Nothing you can say would make you feel any better now. Cop gives up the detective. What in the world just happened? Have I got to go through all of that again? Ugh. I didn't even see anything happen. You've got to be kidding me. Oh my god. That was a lot. Alright, we are going to try to blow through this stuff. This is a lot to go back and do. I found my badge. Study the badge. Look at the photo. Boop, boop, boo. I'm not really sure. Like, I thought I had health. I guess I didn't. Gives me hope. Back to the document. It's a 
Da -da -da. Okay, we did that. We put on this, and we found a bow tie at some point. Goodness gracious! All right, I might just go ahead and just heal myself. Can't I don't I still I don't know if anybody sees. Feel free to let me know exactly what happened there. Da -da -da. Great news! I found somewhere to sleep. Blah blah blah. Okay, done. Some weird chair. Bota. Postcard. Cold breeze. Yep, yep, yep. Bowtie. Okay. Um, there was something over here. Footprints in the snow. Okay. That's probably me. Boat's been tarred. Didn't go up there yet. Check this thing out. Okay, we looked in here. Okay. Looked in there. Oh, we looked in there. I remember that drum. Oh, those are the pants. Yep, yeah, let's, let's put the pants on. And they're going to have a conversation about the pants. I like regular. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. There's some barrels over here. Take that. We had a conversation to Kim about this. These briars are too thick. We've got to come around. Yep. Don't think there's anything. Oh, yeah, we looked at that. It says something about the chair. Sound of life in the north. Washboard scums filth from fabric. Oh, there's a box. I think we actually missed that on our first pass. Don't be in any hurry, Harrier. Oh, that's a bottle. Take that to recycle. Okay. Alright. Take that. Building materials, they left in a hurry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't talk to the kids. Made that weird interaction here. That dog, that's sad. That's enough. Done. Okay, now we talk to these guys. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. Just to be safe. I guess I only have that many save files, so we'll save over here. Okay. We picked up that money. Okay. Okay. Hi, Tequila. Good to see you. As Sh so shake what's his hand. Tequila. Yeah, tequila. Tequila Sunset. How are the um, high concept reality base adventures proceeding? People tell me I'm a cop. Yep, it's this is what I said. Things ain't going that well in idiot doom spiral land. Haven't found those keys yet. Haven't won that great piece of ours back. No word for my business buddies. Okay. Map four. Nope, don't remember. Go ahead. It's out on Friday. Do, do, do. What happened then? 
naturally. I'm sure this is riveting to watch. Just go through this conversation already. Say nothing. Happen next. Right, drove it into the sea. Your name is Harry. Uh huh, we went through all this. Okay. Seem like I want to tell me another story. What do you need? Commodore Red. Go on. Did the jogging help? What happened? Say nothing. Yep, said that. Look on the bright side. I don't realize all this is your own fault. I literally can't believe it. Why do you keep losing all your stuff? Did that. What's the name of your agency? We talked about that. Right. It's with the tracksuit. Interfacing. Good God, it's nearly impossible to describe how dirty this texture is. It's like rubbing two jelly fish skins together. You feel about 15% less human for having touched it. Random Randomized trials have also found that Lycra to be associated with a number of exotic, highly malignant cancers. Oy. So you also have to that to look forward to. <laughs> and then there's the smell. You don't even want to think about that. Pretty nice, huh? This might be one of the last of its kind. Should probably be in a museum, honestly. He takes another sip. Oh, you're lucky he never lets me feel it. That's because your paws are filthy. We're right next to the bay. You could wash them anytime. What about the other drunks? My fellow members of the Union of Morbund Alcoholics are exactly what they look like. Rosemary. Hey, Tequila, you want to buy some speed? <laughs> He's a cop. I thought he was a cool cop. Don't call Abigail. What's this about a lost jacket? Tequila, it's a verifiable tragedy. It was practically brand new. Sure, it really didn't go with my Lycra th threads, but it did itch a lot less. He looks at you, bleary-eyed. Say you're a detective, right? Maybe you can help old Doom spiral out. Solve the case of the missing jacket. What do you say, Tequila? Wait, you're asking police officer to help find a jacket you stole and then lost. Okay, sure. Where'd you lose it? If I knew where I lost it, I don't think don't you think I'd have I'd have it? I mean, maybe I was up by the boardwalk or walking around the beach or checking out some abandoned fish market. There's that's a lot of places. <laughs> Somewhere north of here, that's for sure. You could ask around, see if anyone's seen it. Let me ask you something else. I want to hear a story of your name again. Got any more stories? I do, but as you can see, my fuel tank is running quite low. If you catch my drift spins the bottle in his hand. Not a single drop of liquid remains. Oh, wait, don't I have another Commodore Red on me? Probably don't. Jeez, I already... already gave you some. I don't want to keep doing that. I don't have any on me right now. Be seeing you. Alright. I guess I can't talk to these guys, huh? Don't go, don't go. Grubble's an unshaven man with a ruddy... Knows. He narrows his eyes at you as if in recognition, then turns his head away. The noxious odor emanating from the drunken man is strong and familiar. Don't you call her, you Don't call Abigail. I'll call whoever I want. Who is Abigail? Oh, Abigail. Don't you fucking call Abigail. Hmm. You're not going to get anything from this guy. He's too drunk. Who are you? What's your name? His eyes are move around erratically looking them hazy and unfocused don't call Abigail 
Where am I? What is this place? Why? <laughs> the man hiccups. Why shouldn't I call Abigail? He snorts and beckons you to lean closer. I lean in. He breathes smell, harsh, toxic swamp. And he whispers you, don't call Abigail. Don't call Abigail. Then weighs his hand as if shooing you away. I'm on a important official investigation. I demand you answer my questions. Yeah, he's, that's really going to work. Tell me about your friend. Friends. He glares at you. Don't you call her. Hear me. His voice trembles with every word, becoming even weaker. Abigail, he whimpers in the end. Ah, well, that was less than helpful. What about you, buddy? Good to see you, friend. Do I have deals set up for you, buddy boy? What are you talking about? So what do you want? I got smokes. They're cheap. Very cheap. I got Pilsner. Great deal. You won't get a better deal on that piss. Spirits I can let go for 300 real. Also, I have speed. And by speed, I mean amphetamine. Ah. Quite the business venture you've got set up here. Why, why does the bottle of spirits... Oh yeah, he gets a proud gleam in his eyes. The system's been good to old Rosemary here, and I'm milking her like... <laughs> Gosh. You see, friend, he raises his index finger. Man makes his own luck, and I made mine real good. Got my hands on three bottles of liquor exquisite sold to, to the fellows around here and immediately invested the profit. Bought cigarettes, bought beer, even bought a bit of speed, and look at me now. I got everyone on my hook. He spreads his arms and smiles, a crooked tooth smile. The hook, where is it? I can't see it. Looks like you're on your own hook, too. Impressive entrepreneurship point as a vice stand. I approve. Got a permit for that little shit show. Yep. Permit? He's not really listening. Who gives a shit? You want to buy something? Grease the wheels, buddy boy. See, friend, he brings out one liter bottle of the bluish liquid. The mouth is corked shut. It's real valuable. Worth every real if you catch my drift. Got it from a bit of business, bit of a business venture. No one can buy spirits for 300 real. That's crazy. Let him speak. You know, it's funny, actually. He bursts out laughing, then takes the three gulps of his pilsner and stares at you intently. He's finding it difficult to f focus his watery gaze. What is? What? Keep him talking. What do you mean, what? What did you think was funny earlier? This guy, this guy, he says, and shakes his index finger at you. What did you get? Where did you get the bottle of spirits from? Oh, this is the this is medical spirits, the good stuff. Got it from the doctor's office. I got one of those scientific ampules a few months ago. Torpedo, they call it. It's supposed to keep a man from taking a drink. He spits a nasty yellow clot on the ground before you. Didn't stop me for shit. That's for sure. His voice rings with pride. Five lemons with half a pack of butter and you're good to go. That's a good tip. I should remember it. Well, it really isn't. He cr croaks in a week and in a week the kidneys started giving me all kinds of hell. Finally the missus took me to the private doctor's office, not a charity, the real thing. Those assholes, he gets visibly angry. Those assholes charged me for real to remove the thing. But I came out on top after all. Okay, how? The idiots left me alone in there. Now I use to teach high school biology. I know what doctors use to preserve dead thingies. He gets an excited gleam in his eyes. Swiped three cans of this blue medical stuff from the back room. Threw the snakes out, and voila. What's left is 97 is beautiful blue stuff. He shakes it. 98.7, almost pure alcohol. Snakes are intestinal worms. <laughs> Two, I already sold to these fine gentlemen here. He nods at his companions, but the, this last one is yours for three real if you want it. Can I smell it first? I think it will prove useful. Yes. Can I smell it first? Here, he uncorks the bottle and holds it under your nose. Be careful, it's extremely flammable. One spark in the entire city of Revachol is wiped off the map. Feels... Like someone set a mustard fire ablaze right inside your nose, then drenched it in tear gas. Your nose is a singular source of pain. 
but at the same time, you don't remember the last time you felt so alive. In all fairness, that might be attributed to retrograde amnesia. So what's the deal, friend? Do you want the spirits or not? I think it will prove useful, yes. Three real is yours, friend. The deal of a lifetime. Well done, you got it. That's a much more reasonable price right there. Makes sense now. I don't know what it'll do, but it might be good to have. Alright, let's do it. He hands you the bottle. Make sure you enjoy that one, friend. Alright, I'm off. Da -da -da. I feel like maybe if we need to preserve something... Oh, I can sell it for eight? That's nice. <laughs> well, it's worth eight. I don't know if I can sell it for eight. Alright, let's look for the jacket. Here's some kids. Hey kids, are you gonna cuss at me like Kuno did? Lieutenant, Lily's Lily's twin, the scruffy haired little boy kicks a stone. He can't be more than five years old. Lenny's other twin. The other one looks indistinguishable from him. He watches his brother kick the stones with his tongue lolling out of his mouth. You guys look identical. The stone kicking one becomes frantic all of a sudden, as if that's something to be scared of. The obvious fact that you just stated. He looks just like me, the other one says. Yeah, I said that. The boy doesn't answer. His brother throws another rock. Both of their hair is covered in some kind of dirt. The rock kicker was just being shy, but now he's enthusiastic again. You're bad with kids, the lieutenant remarks. <laughs> with Eve evidently. It's impossible to be good with kids. They're stu too stupid. I am, yes. Don't worry, everyone is. He looks at the little scruffians. Then at you. How about we do some police work now? We're not getting anything out of out of here. Hey, where's your mom? The kids don't reply absorbed in their game. Bye, kids. Take care. Alright. Street sign. Hard to see the details. The colors all worn, welcoming. All warm and welcoming cozy enough. Flower troth, nothing really grows. Hey! Primer for small kids. That's funny. <laughs> Textbook for first grade in primary school. On the cover is a humanoid bear pushing a wheelbarrow full of letters. He's not doing a good job. The letter S is dang dangerously tangling from the cart while E fell off a long time ago. Children should pay more attention. You hold in your hand the colorful primer. The title reads a primer for small kids. There's a bear involved. Exactly what I need. Flip through the pages. Exactly what I need. This book will show you the scores. You get you oriented with those basic concepts of your you appear to be hazy on. The anthropomorphic bear will give you the low down on your life. On what? The alphabet. <laughs> flip through the pages. Every page has one word designating one letter of the alphabet with a faded illustration. Most of them are scientific and cultural principles. It goes as follows. Let's do this. A for azimuth. B for boreas. C is for cosine. D is for diamat. E is for ellipse. F is for phlogiston. G is for gamut. H is for homeboy. I is for icon. J is for jura. K is for Collapse. L is for laudan laudanum. M is for myriad. N is for nadir. O is for oriole. P is for per perihelion. Yeah. Q is for quasar. R is for rhododend rhododendron. S is for sinus. T is for tricolor. U is for ultra. V is for vector. W is for war heat. X is for xylophone. Y is for Estava, and Z is for Zenith. That's it. That's it. You know the alphabet now. And what is called the IL, the international language developed by scientists from Grad in the 20s. Sign, sinus means sign, for example. Kim, I know the alphabet now. Good, I also know the alphabet. Put the book away. That's funny. That's funny. Okay. Can I go this way? Or is it going to stop me? Nope, I can. Let's finish exploring. 
Oh, there's something right there. I wonder if I need the... My trusty... Crowbar. Oh, yeah. Look at that sweet change. Hello. Wash woman. The woman next to the bucket closed hums an odd, an odd melody. Her eyes are closed. You're not sure about the melody, but it might be South Samaran. Possibly Sagayan, also known as the Apricots. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. I have cataracts. Then how does she know you're here? Can't know. Lean forward. Oh, welcome, police officer. We don't cause any trouble around here. And we don't want any trouble either. We are not here to cause any trouble, madame. What he said, we're cops. We don't cause trouble. We take care of trouble. We're cops. We're hell raisers. Click, click, bang, bang. Point your finger pistols at her. That's funny. Oh, of course. Last time we saw you around here was 12 years ago. You also came to take care of trouble then. Wish you did. But still, in Martinez, you're considered an ill omen. Wait, I've been here before? No, not you personally. I meant the RCM. Some of the men got into a fight. One of them killed another. Locked himself in that woodshed over there. She points to the building behind her. He was brooding, needed some help opening the door. You got it open for him and took him to think about what he'd done in a more secluded place. Somewhere more quiet. Hmm. She says it as if it was one of, on some kind of, as if he was on some kind of spiritual retreat. What kind of ill omen are we talking about? Oh, the usual. Dark tidings. Dark tidings. Black hound. If I'm considered an ill omen, why hasn't anyone t told me that? Maybe we are afraid. Why? Because you're an ill omen. But you're still welcome here, as long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then, because that's the kind of fishing village we've built. Hmm. You seem nice. I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park your motor carriage. And not a lot of houses. Or a lot of people. My kids are long gone, searching for treasure. So are others. Hmm. Ah, look at me ramble on. What brings you to us? We could... Where could someone stay around here? Stay, most people here are trying to leave. That said, if lodging is what you're looking for, I've got free room in the shack. Her soapy thumb points to the building behind her. How much is it? Don't know if I can afford another place to stay. How much is it? I won't charge you for it. Take it as a gesture of goodwill from the village to the RCM. Oh, is you just giving it to me? I'm not sure if it's appropriate for RCM to accept free accommodations. I'm not sure if it's appropriate for the RCM to accept free accommodations. The old woman shrugs. Or don't. It's your choice. No skin off my teeth. Why? Why is anyone using the room? My kids grew up and left like they do. The house is long and empty now. I live in the small side of attachment. It's easier and cheaper to keep warm. One more time, I can just have the room. Hi, she nods and looks at the shack. The room is pretty bare bones, but it's bad. It's got a bed and a roof over it, more than some folks have around here. It would help me stay in touch with the proletariat. This could be the first chapter of my Rags to Riches memoir. Now this is rev real Revicholian hospitality. That guard must have... Must be half-kipped or something. Unfortunate that the incremental development hasn't elevated this neighborhood yet. I see potential here. This sounds just fine. An uncomplicated man. She nods approvingly. I take it that means you're interested. Get yourself... You got yourself a tenant. Get your kitty in a home. No, I don't want a free room. It's not proper. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll stay here. Don't take an old woman... Don't make an old woman regret opening her house to the police. Cool. 
Well, if you're not in the hostel in the morning, I'll know where to find you. He looks around and adds, here in a shack. What's in this fishing village? Just us. She sounds tired. It's barely a village anymore. We almost don't exist. What do you mean? This is pretty much a non-place, she grins. A gap, a blank spot on the map. Just a cluster of nameless shacks on the nameless street. The place is so uh, pornographically poor, it's not even funny. It's got to be... S this is Why would I even say this to this poor woman? Lack of wealth is one of the things that we've got abundance of. The woman smiles. It's a cold, cynical smile. Riddles, the lieutenant marks dryly and looks around. Fits the general ambient ambience here. I, her eyes grow wide with glee. Sometimes it's as though I have also gotten lost inside this nameless nothing. I'm lost too. Oh, her expression betrays curiosity. It seems to be a common theme these days. I think I'm in the process of finding myself again. Maybe I should stay lost. I'd really rather go back. Isn't that what people always think when they're lost? A fleeting smirk runs across her lips. Something I can do to help you. F is something I could do to help you find your way, officer? There's got to be something here. Tell me. She waves her hand. Southwest over there, you can find more of the same shacks, trees growing wild. That's the pox. Between here. And Jan walk a dusty sea of old trees, all covered in industrial soot, small houses under them, an overgrown park. The pox, what's that? An old military hospital is sur its and its surroundings. She looked towards the building to the south, or it used to be during the time of the suzerain. After the war, it was turned into a goodwill hospital for shell-shocked veterans and folks looking for some quiet in the old sanatorium gardens. Now the area is crisscrossed with nameless streets, makeshift cinder block houses, shacks as far as the eye can see. What happened to the hospital? The goodwill ran out. She let, she tightens the scarf around her neck. The staff left. The place went, was shut down. It's long gone by now. Who lives in this village? Well, there's... Well, there's... Lelene and her kids... A few new folks live in the house to the east. She nods to her head across the courtyard, but they're away right now. And then there's the drunks, she sighs. Not a pretty sight, but there's little we can do about it. Home is home, even for them. Oh yeah, I've met a couple of drunks here. I'm sure you did, she says with a peculiar smile and nods. Nature keeps them in rotation. A new face pops up every now and then, and an old disappears and is forgotten. This is who we are. Is there a way to make a little money around here? Here for you, she lets out a dry chortle. No, officer. The only way, the only money we have here is some coins the drunks tried hiding from their women and then forgot about it. Under carts, boats, and little boxes. It's not hard to find. All right, there's another topic I'd like to discuss. What's further down the coast? Not much, she replied. Her, her hand wipes her forehead. There's the abandoned church, the DeLorean Church of Humanity. It's been there since before my time, even. Why is it abandoned? Some things just don't fly, officer. She smiles, a gap-toothed smile, and smells the air. Look around. Who'd go to church here? They built the 300 years ago. Must have been nicer then. So they don't hold services there anymore? The Ecclesiastes... No, they've tried, but things just keep happening. Crime, accidents, other things. The place never stays open. She frowns. It's a pity. It used to be such a nice church. What else is down the coast? Before you go to the church, there's some ruins, an apartment complex, or some kind of electrical plant. Run down, bunch of houses empty. Which is it? Apartments or electrical plant? I don't know exactly. A pre-war place. It used to be something. She shrugs. Before the war. I wasn't here then, you know, was born in Samara. Anything else of note? Of note, the old fish market up the boardwalk, but it's closed. Who'd want to come to the fish market? Who'd want to come to a fish market here? No, no one. That's why it's closed. After a long pause, she adds, it was once a bustling place back when I was young, and so was everyone else. Now, what catch we, we do bring in goes straight into a lorry for the Delta or somewhere else. That's it. Got to be more along the coast. 
what you're one of those real estate people with big plans if you want a development opportunity you can check out the abandoned building over at lands inn used to be supply depot we think sending goods and ammo across the bay it's jammed shut though we tried to get in to see if there was anything to sell or scavenge but it's impossible nothing is impossible she drops a bar of soap into the bucket with a splash and now you know everything there is to know about the coast tell me about yourself who exactly are you me no one just an old washerwoman mother called me isabel if that's what you're asking and my married name is Sa sadie now it's your turn uh, call me Harry, Lieutenant W. Fritter Harry Dubois. Quite a handle you got there. The old woman nods, the evident res respect. So many titles. One of them double. <laughs> That's funny. Do you know anything about a lost jacket? What do you w want with a lost jacket? That's an excellent question, ma'am. It's an honor in retrieving lost things. I'm afraid I can't comment official police business. One of the drunks lost it. I agreed to look for it. It's not for me. One of the drunks lost in a freedom. He probably pawned it for some booze and they forgot about it. You know how drunk men are. Are you getting rewarded? No. What? You're fetching someone's missing laundry free of charge? Do you not have anything better to do? In fact, he does. The lieutenant glances at his watch. None of my business either way. How you spend your hours is up to you. Anyhow, you might ask Lilene Le if she's seen anything lately. The girl's got a way of attracting loss of broken things. Goodbye. I'm off. Hey, I got a, a house. Is it this house? Is this my new place? My new digs? I don't think so. Industrial coal pellets burn with orange glow. There's a bird. Full to grouse taxidermy. I don't feel like I should steal it. Someone lives here. Little Lily. Hello, Mr. A young girl, barely four or five old years old, sits on the sofa. She's looking at you with frank curiosity. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally she twirls it around. I heard there was a girl here who has armored gloves. Is that you? Are the twins outside your brother? What's that? Points the stuffed bird hanging from the ceiling. What's that you're holding? Where are your parents? My mom's outside and I don't really know where my dad is. She gives you a bright smile. Like it's a good thing. Are the twins outside your brothers? Yes, she frowns. They don't want to play with me. They're older and play outside. Suddenly she starts snickering. They look the same. Haha. -ha. Sometimes I can't tell them apart. They look identical, right? I said the same thing. They look identical. She slowly processes the word, then snickers with laughter. What's that? It's a grouse, she yelps, smiling broadly. Wasn't Gart, the cafeteria manager, trying to repair a piece of taxidermy? Uh, well, can I have it? Sure, let's go get it and... Sure, let's go get... Let's go get and get it. I don't like it anyway, it looks angry. Alright, you just need to grab it from the ceiling and go. What's that thing you're holding? It's Lambie. He's my friend, sort of. Like she holds a fuzzy beast up to demonstrate. Lambie is a stuffed lamb that admittedly has been seen better days. One of the eye buttons is missing, and the fur is tattered in several parts. Lambie looks like he's falling apart. Lambie looks soft. Oh, well. Oh, okay. Well, pleased to meet you, Lambie. Lambie usually doesn't like strangers, but you're also fuzzy like Lambie. That's funny. All right. Ooh, she looks alarmed. I had gloves, very big ones, heavy too. Where did you get these gloves? I found them when Lambie and I were playing hide-and-seek in an empty house where no one lives. I think someone hid them there. She doesn't want you to think she stole them. And where are the gloves now? She pouts. I hid them. The twins were going to take them. They're stupid. She lifts her stuffed toy up and looks into its one remaining eye as though searching for confirmation. We're going to need those gloves. It's for important police business. He enunciates the last two words carefully. Ooh, she doesn't seem to understand, but the lieutenant's tone has conveyed to her important parts. They're in my sand castle. She points somewhere outside behind our house, underneath the sand. You can break the castle. It's not very good. 
Okay, cool. Bye, the girl's large, curious eyes remain fixed to you. I guess I'll take that, then. Cool. This is not my house. I guess... is this... Is this where I'm staying? You can't see into the house for this angle. Inside you hear the cozy sound of some kind of heater sputtering. Check door. The door has seen better days. The layer of paint has started to peel off due to the salt and wind from the sea. Even the lock looks slightly unlocked the door with a key. I'll wait outside, give you some time to privacy to check out your new living arrangements. But just so you know, after we're done with the di with this day, I'll be I will be staying in the whirling rags for the night. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. The key turns with satisfying click. You can enter the shack now. Huh, well, I already paid. It's 20 I want back. I wonder if he'll let me have it back. This is a cool little place. This seems nice. Floorboards creak under your step. The intricate heat engine hums quietly, giving you pleasant warmth. Using a thermodynamic expander condenser cycle. Nice. Old science fiction magazines and books about bird watching. Almanac for 39. A brisk coastal wind still howls against the against the window of the shack. Occasionally the waves crawl under the foundation, producing a low hum. Listen. The room feels muffled like you pulled your hat over your ears. Outside it is cold and windy, but you're inside, and it feels safe and warm. What is this place to you? My new hangout, where I would... I could silently sit, drink and die while looking at the wa waves roll in, my f forward base for the coastal part of my operation. It's free, that's good enough. I could live here. Looks like this is my new home. Wonder where the old one went. Hmm. Looks like this is my new home. Westward, across the canal, towards the Whirling and Rags, door number one on the second floor is locked. Behind it lies a trashed room. One floor below, behind a counter, stands an, an irritable man. In a small shack in the fishing village, a baroque heater hums quietly, emanating a sense of comforting warmth. A wash basin lies on the table, the water inside reflecting the somber face of the world. Far away on the corner of Perdition and Main, a nondescript building obscured in a haze is vacant and lost, just like its tenant. Thank you... Strange sensation for a fair assessment of the current situation. Outside, the howl of the wind has picked up. The waves crash against the stilts again. It's as if you think the thought, but, but in someone else's voice. Look under the floorboards. Interesting. You see waves, see the church. Mirror, an old mirror. Oh, the expression. That's cool they put a mirror here. I don't know how to look under the floorboards. Uh, not time to rest. Yes, okay, good. On the table, you see a bowl of water, soap. This is a small hand mirror, straight razor, soaks hand eye coordination. Time to shave and get the mud chops off. Watch the smell of death. Thank God you didn't go in there barehanded. Death smells notoriously difficult to get off. But man, persistent. After 15 minutes pass, you look almost presentable, sort of. The sudden absence of the morbid dead tissue smelly. Smell instantly lifts your spirits. Shaving the right call, the water reflects back a vague image of your face. Nose bulbous and red, hair unkempt, wrinkles lining your eyes. The stash is gigantic. A fresh start looms ahead. Clean yourself up and be born anew. Alright, yeah, let's do it. Like an artist with a brush and a master swordsman, you use the small mirror and the straight razor with some soap to remove all the uncumped hair from below the nose line. The sharp blade chafes against your skin, producing a scratching sound. The surface underneath the beard feels tender. The air brushes against the brushing against it chilly. Feel your clean shaven cheeks. 
They feel so smooth, surprisingly so. A feeling of freshness overcomes you as if you came from a cold bath. Was shaving the right call? The water reflects back at a vague image of your clean-shaven face despite the bulbous nose, unkempt hair, and persistent swelling. You look a little younger, maybe. You almost look like a professional. Yeah. Good. Alright, so we gotta figure out how to look under the floorboards somehow. I've even got a thing with me. A, um... Crowbar. Yes? So, I shaved. Uh, yes, said Lieutenant stares at your shaven face, his eyes narrowed. He mumbles, I don't know what to say, perhaps. What is it? You can tell me, Kim. I know, I know, stunning, right? I'm not really sure about this turn of events. I think the mutton chops might have been a better idea. <laughs> they sort of seem to cover up some of the... He stops. Yeah, damage. <laughs> Either way, good on you. The Lieutenant gathers himself, you were saying. That's funny. I can't really see because of the hat, but I think it was the right call. It seemed like, you know, we need to get on with our life here. Out with the old and in with the new, that's what I always say. I bet that's the lady we need to talk to. Boots. What shoes do I have on? Composure, savvy... F Let's put on the, those perception boots. Right, let's run down through here. Ooh, that's something I can... The planks creak beneath your weight. Ladder leads to a school of fish swimming at the keep and kelp. I wonder if this game has a fishing mechanic. This boat is floating freely in the water unmoored. I bet this is the the L Lady Lillian. Aye, officer. The net picker. Aye, officer. A woman in raincoat stands on the, on the quay, considering an overturned boat. A sword in the scabbard hangs from her hip. That depends. Where are we exactly? A fishing village on the seashore. This place doesn't really have a name. It's sometimes called Elizabeth. Eligible. Why? The sign on the street leading here is illegible. Has been since they built this place. Then rattles her earrings. Hmm. The question I've got questions. The first is, what's your name? The name is Lily. People call me Netpicker. I knew I had time for questions, and that was actually the second one. <laughs> Indeed, you're always confused as to your whereabouts. I'm looking for someone, maybe you can help. Let's see. She tilts her head ever so slightly. Who are you looking for? I'm looking for a missing cryptozoologist. Ah, she frowns, thinking, I don't think I know what these are. Care to elaborate? People looking for imaginary animals. People who look for animals who are hard to find. People who look for animals mainstream scientists deny exists. People who look for animals hard to find. Ah, she exhibits like snowmen. Snowmen. I haven't heard about those. Two odd guys have been wandering around here. Nose in sand, talking nonsense about snowmen and the like. Wait, the like? Where did they go? I don't really know. Further down the peninsula, I guess. I mean, that's where they're heading. She points north. Who else are you looking for besides snowmen? That's it. Not looking for anybody else right now. Well, how can I assist you? I am looking for someone else. Idiot Doom Spiral over here needs his jacket. Have you seen it? Remarkable. She shakes her head. That one already lost everything else. Now his jacket. It's a good thing, too. That ha it's a good thing too that he has an actual police officer looking for it. A smile lights up her face. Good old Doom Spiral. Upper management to the core. That's odd. Is she actually impressed? I'm just trying to help a stranger in need. No, no one plays Johnny Jacket. I find it. I keep it. I'm collecting evidence. I don't really know why I do things. Everything just happens to me. No, I'm just trying to help a stranger in need. That's sweet of you. Really, it, it is. It really is. I'd check around the abandoned fish market on the boardwalk. Trunks are inexplicably drawn to markets. Might be why they have such trouble staying in business. A phenomenon that the 
spectral hand theory of the market fails to account for. If one of them lost something, that's a good place to start looking. What do you do around here? Like I said, fish mostly, sail the waves, take care of kids, pick nets. Right now, tarring a little skiff. What else? I sell fish to the people in the Delta to serve at their fancy restaurants, authentic Insulindian cuisine. So enough to make a living. Sometimes I also walk the beach to see what Stee has given up. Stee is full of surprises. Keep a professional man. Don't make it sound like you're hitting on her. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> what have you found? I've never... Th I never thought the sea brought in anything. Walking on the beach sounds quite romantic. All right. I think I get it. Let me ask you something else. What have you found? Wood, pieces of glass. Every once in a while, we see dead bodies, human, animal, fish, other odd sea creatures. I Aman washed ashore once. Oy. She looks at the beach and continues. Bottles, drugs also. Lost cargo in general. But most of the time, just wood and glass. Alright, major choice moment. You only get to ask one thing. It would be weird to say them all. Choose wisely. I need to know about these human bodies. A mine. Marcium could use a mine. Drugs. I need info on the major narc. This place looks bad. Why don't you leave? Ugh. This place looks bad. Why don't you leave? I'm not here. Ugh. I can only ask one question. Well, I would ask why she doesn't leave. And go where? The fish are plentiful here. When we get enough orders to get by. It's not great, but it's something. Gotta follow the work. Where's the money? sleeps. That's where the money sleeps anyway. Anywhere with better opportunities. Just somewhere. Away from all the sadness. Just gotta follow the work. That's where the money sleeps. I understand what you're saying. Could be worse elsewhere. Exactly. She tries to smile. Reaches in her net. I don't mean to complain about my sad popper life. We do manage alright. We're tough people. Nice sword, point of the saber on her hip, does come with a story. Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three-year warranty instead of a story. She smiles at her own joke. It's to... It's to intimidate folks, mostly. It is imposing. It's a regular mass-produced sword, like a shovel or an axe. Nothing fancy, just for intimidation. Why do you need intimidation? From time to time, people need a lesson in respect... That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eyes of many men, and believe me, she adds, tittering, men need a lesson in manners from time to time. Why don't women arm themselves? So where are all the, so where are all the men now? Why don't more women arm themselves are so effective? What makes you think we haven't? <laughs> she smiles. <laughs> the truth is, almost everyone in this life is scarred, is scared, and struck scared and tired and stupid and too dull for that that goes for men too but they put on an act for us pretend like everything's good living in shit doesn't bother them like everyone falls for that behold point to the expression on your face true most people I've met are scared I no one wants to talk about how frightened they are but only frightened people are really dangerous only frightened people are really dangerous, and plenty of them are dangerous. So, where are all the men now? Some went to patch their wounds, their lessons learned, others were more thick headed. She looks around, and one of them I ended up marrying. Wait. Why, if they're thick headed? Where's your husband now? Gone. Gone where? He disappeared, sounds. Gone, coward. To the waves, her eyes st stop in yours. T the sea took him. It was a long time ago. That's bad. What happened? So sorry. Send him more away f wait for her to continue. Died. Was he murdered? Oh. Say no more. 
for her to continue. He didn't respect the sea, went out there drunk like a skunk, and sure enough, one day the boat was found floating empty. The bloated corpse turned up two weeks later. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, know that it is f it was four years ago and I've moved on. There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. Yeah, death is nothing. You should have thrown yourself in the waves after him. Nods sagely. Time really is the best cure for sorrow. It's healthy to let go and move on. Got to keep the wheels spinning. Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bed sick with melancholy. She crosses her arms. I buried him, mourned for an appropriate amount of time, and went on. She glances at the village with her two little kids. Her two little kids are playing with what looks like rocks. Life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. This is neither touchy nor a very interesting topic for her. She looks like she's ready to go on a date with another <laughs> with another better drunk. Ask her. Both of you could need action. <laughs> Suggestion heroic. Don't know a good spot yet. Explore the coast. That's funny. That's uh it's a white check, so I could always do it again, but yeah, I'm not going to do that right now. So take that your skiff. Points at the overturned boat. Sure is the sun I call her. Coated it with freshly layered tar. Just yesterday, it'll take some time to dry, assuming the sunny days come. Sunny days? Aye, <laughs> she looks at the rain, circles the water. Sunny days. You got a problem with that? No, ma'am, we have no quarrel with sunny days. Good would have been bad news had it turned out it wasn't a sunny day bad news for the skiff bad news for the nets bad news for the kids there's a moment of silence she looks at the rain streaming down the yellow belly of the boat when do you think your boat will be ready in time she replies with a nod when the sea turns and the wind settles she will be ready waves wash the sand a skiff moves across a mirror smooth sea Far away from here, a lone passenger. Fast sloop in the distance, white sails. My prediction, it will be at least two days. Alright, well that's... That's all that. We will, we might come back and ask her out on a date. We'll see. Be seeing you. Alright. Can I go in here? Uh, doesn't seem like it. So I need to look under the. I got a house. Man, we're we're doing really good. I need to go back to guard. Give him that taxidermy thing. There's her sandcastle. So that's probably where the gloves are. I'm guessing probably somebody else already stole them. Weather has not been kind. The lily sandcastle, the once mighty towers, are quickly eroding away. You can see something shining back at you from must have been vast underground catacomb at work. Broken. The little castle. The lieutenant smiles a little. The reigning lord must have come upon some really tough times to let it slip into the dis decrepitude. Reach in the catacombs, pull out the shiny object. Boom! Got the gauntlets. The walls and floors give away to the giant's greed, collapse, and present you with a pair of ceramic gauntlets. Congratulations, that's the gauntlets down. Then we're doing good on the armor collection front. Nice! Now, can I get in here underneath? It says look under the floorboards, but I didn't get a prompt to do that, so... Can I not... I don't know how I'm going to look at that. I guess maybe further down the coast. This is good. This is a good point to take a break. But I keep on running around. <laughs> wow, we've done a lot. Wow, I didn't really think that we were going to get that much. kind of thought we had to hit a snag, but we've, we're doing good. Okay, so let's see. Oh, we've got a, we've got a point. We have, oh, we've got two points. We're going to be so rich. All right, I'm going to wait. I'll level that up next time. I'm just kind of looking. Let's see what else. What else do we Oh, we got the gauntlets to interfacing. What do I have right now? One. Heck yeah, let's put them gauntlets on. Authority and composure. Perception. 
we got that figured out. Impossible. Okay. Yeah, I think we're doing good. I don't know what that is. Visual calculus. As you fold your fingers into a fist, you realize you could knock anyone out with one punch. The white ceramic gloves wrap around your digits comfortably. Your movement causes tiny little clicks, like dice rolling from somewhere far away. The plates reorient to your motions. I will be responsible with this. This is just to protect me from harm, not to show off. Decked out in future armor like a cop ought to be. Yes, I will be responsible. The hardened vitreous enamel at one sleek and light at one sleek and light adds a glow to your cheeks and spring to your step. It's just imagine what a full suit of the stuff could do for you. You really do feel more confident and vulnerability does that. Even partial vulnerability. One down, two pieces to go. Here I come. Yeah, I want the full suit. This gear could line my pockets. This is a long sought after enemy technology. Yeah, one down, two to go. Two? Are you sure they're you're correct there? There was a helmet too. Three pieces more likely. You were ambitious. Yeah, I want the full suit. It may be a while before you have all the pieces. In the meantime, you should analyze the armor, figure out its vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities. Remember, this is a highly specialized kinetic redistributor meant to stop bullets. Wear it, observe its properties. See if there's a weakness in the design. Or the day you have to fight someone covered in the same material. That's good. You're right. We should do that. I'll have to do that. Okay, again, we'll redo that next time. Okay. Close the water lock. Explored the fishing village. Met a nice lady. Got a um, piece of taxidermy for Gart. Met a hobo. Told me all about my drunken escapades. Found the car. Found my badge. There's a lot of stuff to do. It really has kind of opened up some stuff. So, well, uh, thanks for hanging out and joining me. I'll be back soon for another uh, stream, another episode of Disco Elysium. I feel like we've really cracked open a bunch of stuff here. So, if you're watching this live and you want to see the older episodes, hop over to YouTube, where the old episodes live, along with the other Let's Plays I do. Um, and then, if you're on YouTube watching this later, check the comments for a link over to Twitch. If you had a good time and you want to keep up with it, just click the follow button and you'll get notifications anytime I go live, and I appreciate it. So thanks for hanging out with me, and I hope you guys have a great day. See ya!